against the grills, you bastard. Cover my tracks like butter, so where the bread be? I see beef is dead meat. Who that yes. the president? Yeah, me. No one scare me. First off, we got 300 logo on the bucket hat. You rotate the bucket hat, you get the Malbon logo. Then we have this type of shirt with a camp collar that is classically worn by ethically polyamorous men in Brooklyn. Um, and then when I stand up, you will see the piece de resistance. <laughs> oh, it's a matching set. Yeah, it came with matching shorts. Yeah, he got the faux romper on there. Also, the term is ethically non-monogamous, not ethically polyamorous. Mm -hmm. Just to be clear, I'm less concerned with the terminology and more that like they wear that type of shirt. Not this pattern though. It'll have like little roses on it or something. Roses or like Hawaiian shirts. This is Some kind of paisley pattern. Yeah, it's like. <laughs> dudes who are i guess ethically non-monogamous and they're like at the fucking club wearing this shirt also the club is like a loosely used term here it's like the brooklyn the, like i wouldn't yeah. call it elsewhere the club i would call it elsewhere like a place people go to congregate yeah nobody's like bottles over there and shit yeah. what was that place that we went trey the like a couple nights after my book release Oh, sisters. Yeah. That place has extreme non-monogamous energy. Oh, yeah. No, that's the kind of place if you want to get approached by a couple about how much they like your vibe. Like, yeah. <laughs> it, it, it's like the girlfriend, you might be like, uh, oh, but the boyfriend is like, absolutely not. And then. <laughs> is this the intro to your podcast? <laughs> um, yes, this is the intro to Nersey. It what? feels like an old noisy editorial meeting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's kind of the that's kind of the vibe we're going for. Everybody talking about everything but articles that we need to write. Just yeah. free form, free flowing. Hey, there are no bad ideas, you know. There, there's some bad ideas. <laughs> well, nobody was up, <laughs> nobody was bringing up like you know ethno terrorism or whatever in the noisy meetings. That's, I'm talking about in context. Yeah, I think Slava was talking about some ideas that he had while. Uh, under the employ of Noisy. Anyways, yeah, correct. Uh, Leslie, you have not met Slava, right? No, I don't think we have ever met. Well, let's introduce you... Leslie first. So um, this week, our guest is Leslie Horn Peterson, who is a writer and editor, as every single one of our guests is, inevitably. She has worked at Deadspin and used to be like everyone's boss at Vice, but she was like a cool boss. Leslie's the one who did all the layoffs. Don't listen to him. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. You know, I meant to bring this. I know this is audio, but are you ready for this? Let's do it. Let's, let's see it. Oh, oh, is that the Dolph one? Yeah. What am I looking at? This is okay. This is from... a Dolph self portrait. Yo, yes. I was searching the office. For oh my God. A year wait, after wait, wait. Yeah. I killed. Uh, Dolph drew that? Yes. Dolph drew that. Yeah. Uh, oh my God. I, have... I was planning to give it to you. Like, oh, okay. Okay. Six. I'm going to, yeah. Like, I, I was planning that. to give it to you and I was going to, like, send it to you, but then I figured this was a good occasion to reveal it. Yeah. Okay. So, for anybody not list or not knowing what's going on right now, this is a huge moment in musical history. Um, so, I interviewed Young Dolph about like four or five times while he was alive. He had RIP. And the first time I interviewed him was during the self portrait series for the company we used to work at. And <laughs> yeah, I talked to him while he was doing this. This was like a week after like the incident in Charlotte happened. <laughs> mm. And then uh, he did the self portrait. And then we hung out for a bit. And then I. Did not know I was expected to ride around in a Sprinter van with him for the rest of the night, which I did, which was sick. <laughs> and like, yeah, and like do the fuller article and stuff. But um, this was like a week after he had been like had fucking a hundred shells just like thrown at him while he was in a Sprinter van, and I was like, "Ain't no way this one bulletproof too, man!" Like, yeah. Oh my but, god! But it was sick. Like he took a bunch of riders to Budokan. Rick Ross walked in. 
Damn. Like it, yeah, and then he performed, and then he wanted. Also, he played key Glock for me for the first time. I had never heard of key Glock before. He was like, he was like my little cousin or whatever. I was like, okay, like yeah. I don't know if wow. cousin was using like the colloquial like southern term or cousin or whatever, like somebody you know growing up or whatever. Well, but, um, yeah. The self portrait lives. Shit. Yeah, yeah. I, I've been I've been looking for that like the holy grail. So this is like I I have um. I have a bunch of them right here, actually. I've got. I th- think this is Omarion. Boys, this is how we fund. This is how we fund Nerzu. Um, Slava, Trey, Leslie, I won a golf tournament with OMBPZ yesterday, uh, which I've told you all about. But I just need to reiterate the degree to which I won a golf tournament with OMBPZ yesterday. That's sick, dude. Congratulations. Congratulations. How much how much did you contribute to that win? Um yeah, it, 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 it doesn't matter, man. That's what a team is. Like when someone's falling yep. behind, you go and you pick up. This is how I know that no one here plays golf besides Drew, because no one asked him what his handicap is. <laughs> we were getting into that. Uh, we were getting into that. Yeah, yeah. But also we weren't. And like I'm yeah, you don't come on. You're not a guest in my house calling me out, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I do the dishes the way I do the dishes, okay? Yeah. Listen, I just know enough about golf to sound like I kind of know what I'm talking about. <laughs> well, to answer your question, Trey, I contributed some. I made some putts that I did not think I would make, but nice. uh the main contributor was this dude who's on the Canadian PGA tour who uh some guy, like another music industry guy, bet ten grand with the uh, one of the founders that his team would win the tournament, and because is like really good at golf, and he had I think his team won last year, and so this dude enters the tournament. At least I think this is what happened. He enters the tournament, like asks around finds like a kid from Atlanta who is on the Canadian PGA tour and like flies him and his caddy out for the tournament and then has this kid like take his spot on the team, which just so happened to include me and OMB PZ and this other dude who is a private citizen, but was really cool. Um, But yeah. So this guy that got human trafficked for the golf game, he like what part of Canada is he from? <laughs> no, 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 he's from Atlanta, but he plays on the Canadian PGA Tour. He plays where they tell him to play. Is he helping Canada Sports Wash? Yeah, yeah, he's helping Canada okay. Sports Wash. Um, right. Or like, no, nah, it's like basically the tiers of pro golf are like PGA Tour slash Live Golf, uh, and so then. And then this thing, yeah, just live golf at this point. Yeah. Then this thing called the Corn Ferry Tour, which is like the minor, it's like the G League for the PGA. And then the Canadian okay. PGA Tour is somehow in third place below the PGA's The Corn G Ferry Tour? Yeah, like the band. I've never... Wait, so like, how I've do you get heard this from... Yeah, like, for, okay, first of all, how do they get that name for it? And then second of all, how do you move among the tiers? Um, like, is it like a promotion relegation thing or like... I did not know there was picked... a third Yeah, tier? I did not know there were tiers of North American golf. This is insane. Like, I just thought you were either like pro or like amateur or just like... Oh, there's tiers. Yeah, it is sort of like a promotion relegation thing where... If you want to get on the PGA Tour and you're not on it already, you can do this thing called Q School, which is like a series of tournaments that uh, if you do well enough in them, you get like bumped up, you get accepted onto the tour. And then like every year they cut like the last x number of people on tour to make room for new people and it's like that for all those tours like corn ferry and pga tour canada and oh shit um and 
I mean, the reason that Corn Fairy is second is because if you win enough events on the Corn Fairy Tour, you get bumped up to the PGA Tour. Um, and this kid was like right on the cusp of getting onto the Corn Fairy Tour. He missed it by like a stroke. And he also missed qualifying for the U.S. Open, like the PGA Tour tournament, by two strokes. And he was incredible. He hit shots that I have never even, like, seen possible. And also, like, uh, no one listens to this. It's fine. Um, He, on, like, the first hole, he has his friend roll him a blunt. And he goes, I brought my caddy with me. The reason I have a caddy is so he rolls my blunts. Well, that's why he's not on the fucking PGA tour, goddamn. Like, he, <laughs> he wants the freedom. The sure. <laughs> wow. What if the yeah. Corn Fairy Tour is where you can smoke blunts on the golf course? Yeah, it's beer league. Yeah. But this is what it, the Corn Fairy Tour sounds like. It's beer league. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think that probably you can just like take edibles on the PGA tour. Have you ever um, been to a corn fairy tour event? I have been to a, it used to be called the nationwide tour. And that seems more reasonable. Oh, no, I know about this now. Okay. It's named after like financial institutions. Yeah, I believe Corn oh, Fairy. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I didn't yeah. realize it was just like a sponsored thing, but like Okay. Oh, so who the fuck is Corn Fairy and how do they have the money to sponsor like a nationwide golf tour? Are you thinking it's C O R N? Okay, yes. I just realized that it's Yeah. I thought it was like corn, like hum nom 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 nom. Fairy. <laughs> no, no, no. Oh, it's a consulting <laughs> firm. It's Not like, like cor- it's like spelled corn like corn. Spell it, out. spell it out. It's like someone's name, right? Yeah, it's spelled like corn, the band that goes, Are you ready? Um, and then Those F- are very nice guys. Yeah. yeah, they're great. Um This makes more sense than Okay, yeah. I, I thought Corn Fairy you were talking about like yeah, something that's like, like, yeah, like, like the ragtime, like fucking blue man group or something. And I was like, why are they, <laughs> like, why are they doing this? Like, if, why would you name a management consultant firm that? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You they, had got to the, know, they got the money. They got the money. You had to know it would cause problems. You know, these are not new developments in the culture, corn and fairies. It's not like they named their shit like Bluetooth uh, headset in like 19 <laughs> fucking 62. And they're like, fuck, yeah, that's I, just the I name was of the company about, now. Dude, I was thinking about like a tugboat down the Mississippi or some shit. Like, yeah. I, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, I was thinking about like like a folk like a folk demon that like made your mm. made your crops go bad or something. That too. That's right. Fairy with like uh the umlauts on the E. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or or it's like that A and that E that are just like connected together for some reason. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that letter yeah. appears like twice. Uh, <laughs> Straight up Chaucer. But, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, OMV PZ, he... He's a dude. He's a dude. Well, he had gone to the tournament last year and had so much fun, like, fucking around on the putting green, apparently, that he decided to take up golf. And this year, he has played in a bunch of, like, this type of golf tournament and he was having so much fun um and he ended up making like a crucial putt that prevented us from getting a bogey it was like a putt that like none of the rest of us on his team had any confidence that we were going to be able to make and we were having him hit first and he was just like Hold my hold my blunt. I'm gonna make this shit. Steps up to it, boom, right in. And then, yeah, thanks mostly to this like professional golfer who was a literal ringer. Uh, we were 17 under for the tournament, which was one round. Um, we were one 
putt away from being 18 under as in averaging a birdie every hole. And then so we win and we're all excited, but no one is excited as OMBPZ. And he is like clowning Ja Rule and Kevin Lyles <laughs> about having kicked their asses. And like <laughs> at one point, like FaceTime someone who I'm pretty sure was Kodak Black to be like, yo, I just won this golf tournament. Here's my teammates. And he's like showing, uh, again, this person who I couldn't see clearly, but really looked like Kodak Black, like me and the pro golfer and the private citizen fellow. And it was just, yeah, uh, this fucking dude's rock is the point. Were there any women in the tournament? Yeah, yeah. Angie Martinez played. Oh. Oh, I heard she's good. Yeah, yeah. She can play. She was trying to teach Joe Budden. Really? really? Yep. Yep. Yeah. Joe Budden talked uh, about it at length. And then uh, I, I don't want to spoil the Joe Budden podcast for all our listeners, but uh, <laughs> okay. Joe Budden's not a huge right. fan of golf. Yeah. That's yeah. very considerate of you. <laughs> you yeah. want to listen to them both. We're in the same universe. You know? We are. Yeah. We're in the same uh, affiliate network. <laughs> <laughs> We all sell um, the Casper mattresses, it's, you know. Yeah. He um, has no podcast ads. And then, I mean, no, there were like there were like a fair number of women competing in the tournament. Um, while I was like waiting around before the tournament, uh, I was talking to like a woman next to me who was playing, and she was like very obviously a serious golfer, and like some of her friends came up who were also all women and we were chatting with them. And then I'm sitting in my golf cart and OMB PZ comes and sits next to me. And he's like, yo, this is my golf cart. And I was like, well, it's my golf cart too. And then I was like, wait a second. I'm just going to be in a golf cart with OMB PZ all day. <laughs> it's our golf cart. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, we had a great time. Um, at one point I was like, PZ, you know, like I rarely feel like my life a movie, but like we've just gotten our second Eagle of the day and I'm at the 300 entertainment Malbon golf tournament, my life a movie. And he was like, shit, man, <laughs> my life a movie every day. And that honestly sounds like, exhilarating. Yeah. Nah, if my if my life was a movie every day, man, that would just be No. How, how much how much sleep do you need a night for that? Yeah. I mean, That's true. the day that Drew had sounded exhilarating. Okay. <laughs> yeah. What does OMB stand for? Um, I mean, I it's not any of our business. The O he said stands for overkill. Um, and he was saying that he does, he calls it overkill because he's like, I'm going to go so hard with everything I do that I'm going to like overkill it because of my effort and drive. And then he told us this and I decided that I, in that spirit of overkill, would take a seven iron to a green that was like 140 yards away. And I was like, I'm doing it. I'm doing overkill, PZ. And then I flew the green by like 20 yards. I did just Google what does it stand for. And unfortunately, it is not immediately clear. It stands for all my bullshit. The O stands for overkill, but like, and then the M is like maybe, and then the B is but sometimes, you know, <laughs> like the other part of it, yeah. Um, like MB if they tell you how long to put the fish sticks in the oven, you don't overkill those. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, and that's what you do. You put the fish sticks in the oven for 50 minutes. Yeah, it's, a, it's <laughs> one of those hydraulic devices that you use to remember stuff. Uh, wait, don't you mean mnemonic devices? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Work. it's only my brothers. Oh, okay. <laughs> Not um, overkill. And that's how the sausage gets made at Noisy, folks. <laughs> You 
I mean, also the thing about PZ is like he had he has a lot of like natural athletic ability as like a golfer. He was still figuring out his swing, but like when he connected, he could hit the shit out of a golf ball. And he also had really good aim. And so like when the swing connected correctly the ball like went exactly where he wanted to he was like still learning his technique though but like yeah unfortunately i didn't really know who omb pz was so i was looking at the group chat and cheering for you guys but i'm not like super familiar with his music but uh i am a huge fan of him as a person and a dude now that i know he's like good at sports um and i feel like that's a very dude thing to put on someone i was gonna ask leslie if that's something that translates across genders are women ever like, Oh, that's awesome that a woman can like do this athletic feat because with men, it carries over to other stuff. So someone will be good at sports, but then he'll be respected and his opinion will be looked to for other things because of that sport Mm -hmm. talent. Do I value sports knowledge in women or do women value ability sports ability? Yeah, I mean, I think I'm, like, impressed by, like, athletic athletic ability, for sure. Does Not it just impressed. Like, it, it, it's like a lodestar in that person's Does it personality. Raise, no, it doesn't, doesn't. It's a big deal. Yeah. Also, when men also, hang also out. Also, like, I feel like that's not across the board because, like, I personally, I don't just respect men for being good at sports or, like, any kind of, like, athletic physical thing. It's like, you know, it's like, you know, because at the same time, like you could break open a fortune cookie and just slide the piece of paper over and tell them like, read that out loud. (laughs) But you're going to, okay, let's say you guys are all hanging out and then someone is cooking at the basketball court. You're going to ask that person where you're going to go eat later. That person become like, gets this halo Mm. of, of leadership put upon them. See, if you meant like literal cooking, and the person no. <laughs> was like, no, I know you don't, but I'm like, I don't care if someone's good at basketball, but like if they had good taste in food and good taste in that kind of thing, I think I care about that more. That'd be more impressive. Yeah. Because I feel like you kn- that means you know stuff. You know. Yeah, there's, there's like being good at something and it's having good taste. And I think I'm like a little more impressed with good taste. Yeah. Or like knowledge about particular thing do you guys know who martin martin lisi's is no who's that martin lisi's is the world's strongest man he can lift a rock that weighs 800 pounds over his head (laughs) okay that's pretty cool that's a cool that's a cool thing to be able to do but also like can he walk through a door without moving sideways no absolutely not (laughs) yeah 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 come on yeah He's, He's like everybody everywhere I take you, you're embarrassing me. Like, yeah. <laughs> but I'll do we anything. Can, we can't go hang out at a bar. Like, yeah. You're gonna be knocking everything really over the whole time. Yeah. To be just like also, I don't want to know where he eats. He does kind of like a vice style travel show on his Instagram where he like goes and just like lifts stuff and then eats. It's pretty interesting. Damn. But he goes to China a lot, which is suspicious. <laughs> Because, like, what are you doing there as a world's strongest man, you know? Picking shit up. Visiting China? <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> Apparently. Like, yeah. No, but I just wanted to ask, like, what is what is a man? What is a dude? What's a dude? Dudes rock. Are all men dudes? Can women be dudes? All men aren't dudes, but some women, women can be dudes. Yeah. I use dude interchangeably. Men are dudes. Women are dudes. Good chunk of they, thems are also dudes. Yeah. Yeah, guys are dudes. <laughs> I meant Sam. What was the whole, what, 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 wait, what was the whole Good Burger song? Like, I'm a dude, he's a dude, she's she's a, a dude. dude cause we're, we're all dudes. Hey. What, so what makes someone a dude? You're just with the shits, man. I don't know. I really don't. I feel like I don't have like a, de- like um, I have a definition for like a bro. Like bros are like, right. bros are. But bros aren't dudes. No, I think there's a slight ben, middle of a Venn diagram between bros and dudes, but it's narrow as hell. Bros are always dudes, but b- dudes aren't always bros. No, bros aren't always dudes. Hmm. Yeah, I might go that. I- I'm with Slava on this one. I think. I think I might go the opposite direction. Like every bro is not a dude, but every dude is to some extent a bro. 
like I'll I'll make this even more complicated. All jocks are bros, but very few jocks are dudes. They're meatheads. But a bro, there's a little more to a bro. <laughs> Just However, a little. Yeah. way more a to a dude. A bro okay. has some yes. lore behind him. So it's a just yeah. a real taxonomy yeah. of a taxonomy of guys. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I think we're all dudes here though. Well, I think I think the thing about being a dude is that like you don't care if you're a bro. Because jocks mm-hmm. don't know the difference. Jocks have no idea yeah. what the that okay. they're even jocks. A bro aspires to be a dude, but a dude doesn't care about bros at all, but he'll hang with them. <laughs> yeah. A dude's just kind of like on his own shit. Like you don't see him wearing J. Crew every weekend. Hmm. Leslie, let's now that we're like several Hmm. dozens of minutes into this podcast, let us establish your bona fides um, as an expert on men. First of all, you are... (laughs) You are a wife to a man and the mother of a future man, okay. correct? Correct. And then also, when you were at Deadspin, you had a column called Classic Man, where you reviewed passages of a book from 1987 called The Modern Man's Guide to Life. Is this correct? Oh, my God. Yeah. Oh, I actually forgot about this. Yeah, you really dug into the archives. Um, I didn't dig that hard. I googled Leslie Horn Deadspin men. You're kind of <laughs> dressed like Nardwar right now, too. <laughs> oh my god, you really do the hat. What insights into the male condition do you have uh, for us? Oh boy. Um, my husband also plays golf. Mm-hmm. Golf seems to be a big thing. In fact, I am sitting on my bed right now because my husband's in the other room doing a football draft. Oh, okay. Fantasy football draft. Fantasy sports, yep. Fantasy sports, big thing around here. That's big dude activity. Mm Mm-hmm. Also sports, just sports in general. Yep. Soccer, a few times a week. My son is getting into sports. Oh my god! I should show you guys this picture of him trying to play football. It is football is a really generous term for what it is, but American football. American football. Yeah, Slav is Canadian. You have to distinguish these things. I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So hundred hundred yards, eh? Not ninety. Okay. Yeah, but right now he's five, so it's just, and he's gonna be in kindergarten this year. Um, so he's like the youngest, you know, youngest group of kids, and it's just flag okay. football. Okay. Nobody's yeah. going to tell you this, but this is the perfect time to put him on a cycle of steroids. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. Let's let's grow them like they do in Texas. <laughs> I could see myself becoming like a hardcore sports mom really fast, though. Because mm. you know what? He's like out there. Well, you know what? Like last season in soccer, he would just like pick the grass and move mm-hmm. off. And at football practice on Monday, he was like, locked in the zone paying attention so oh man maybe as a future where do you stand on participation trophies oh i feel like kids need to lose (laughs) yeah that's what i'm talking about i was getting that vibe from you yeah no i i I agree with that and this is coming from the generation where we all got participation trophies but like i think on like a serious note i think that kids need to experience disappointment and they need to lose and they need to like understand how to do those things in like understand that that's a part of life too and that like winning is fun but sometimes you lose and it's okay i think like at a certain at a certain age i got to a point where it was like and i think this age might have been like six or seven but it was like this is just like a monument to failure <laughs> like why, why are you giving me this thing yeah yeah it's like oh congratulations for not being good enough here like remember this forever and it was like oh and i think that's a good idea like change the name from participation trophy to like now you just have to look at this for the next few years until your parents let you throw it out (laughs) think about how inadequate you were and how you're going to be better next time disappointment trophy. yeah the disappointment trophy yeah those are called nfts (laughs) 
<laughs> on the topic of like dudes, like my son, he loves all the dude stuff. Like, like Legos, mm-hmm. trains, oh. cars. Okay. We've got so many like little Hot Wheels cars. Does he have the set with like the booster that like when he goes through it just like throws him through the whole loop or he's got this ultimate garage that it like loops down and sick. there's a dinosaur that you can crank up to the top what? and then like you can like unleash the cars and the dinosaur is like ha ma 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 like chomping at the cars. That's sick. That's, that's, he, awesome. that's so sick. He's really elevated this thing because he'll connect like Legos and trains to it. Oh my God. And he's like, he called me into his room today and he was like, mom, look at this. And like at the end of this, like three story Hot Wheels loop de loop, he'd put like a wooden train track that goes up to a, like a, a bridge. And he's like building it out. Like I'll probably go in his room tomorrow morning and he will have like created loops and all this stuff. Like he's, he's living it up. So your son you might have a future linebacker like slash like engineer on your hands or whatever maybe he's definitely a dude he's definitely a dude do you ever see like behavior in him that you recognize in either you know your husband or like other like adult men i mean yeah he's just like my husband like when you recognize that stuff, does it make you take like the men in your life who also do those things less seriously? <laughs> okay, there's like there's like multiple ways. There's like a serious way of looking at that, mm-hmm. which is like and like he absolutely does things that I do mm-hmm. too. We both do. I think that like we both see stuff and we're like, "Oh my god, he got that from me." Like, I got to, like, not do that or, like, tighten up or whatever. (laughs) And then there's stuff that, like, he just, like, jokes all the time. It's just – and he thinks he's really funny. Mm -hmm. And that's, like, exactly, like, my husband. And I don't know. Do I – it's just funny. Like, it's it's just funny. He's funny all the time. Mm. He's also – I shouldn't say this on a podcast, but sometimes kind of a pain in the ass, as kids are. Mm -hmm. But – I didn't say that. Everybody acknowledges that. Yeah. He's not going to listen. No, it's like how you can talk shit yeah. about Amish people on a podcast, you know? Like, they're not <laughs> yeah. Gonna yeah. They're never going to hear it. What do you, in like, let's say, I feel like he's going to be good at the internet because he's Gen, he's not even Gen Z. What's, what is he? Alpha, baby. Gen Alpha. Yeah. Gen Alpha. He's going to like, 13 years from now when he's like Googling me, he finds this podcast. He gets what, mad on, pay, on page school. fucking like 329 of Google. Yeah. Yeah have an ai find it for him yeah he, he, he said like the microsoft ai is like has my mom ever shit talked to me <laughs> and the ai is like what's your mom's name and it's like it's a, solita- a solitary link a solitary <laughs> link it's like who the fuck even transcribed this like how do you- yeah we're out of control now man this is what black mirror is about <laughs> Not to mention, he's like super angry because he's on steroids for such a long time by this point. You know? <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's like fucking everything, everywhere, all at once, and every choice you made led like, to you creating the next Unabomber. And, um, oh my God. I do think about that a lot. I'm like, okay. Because there's a bad version of dudes. There is a bad version of dudes. You know? They're not dudes. They're dudes by like name, but not practice. Yeah. Well, that's it. Like, there has to be a name for them. And I hate incel. I hate how everybody's an incel now. Oh, my God. I got bothered by a guy over the weekend that I think was a literal. I think he was an incel. What? I think he was an incel. Spill the tea. (laughs) I went to lunch by myself. I was in Astoria on Saturday. Danny, my husband, was in a wedding. And I was just a wedding guest. So I, like, was hanging out. Whatever. Go to this restaurant. I sit down by myself and there's a guy. Wait, wait, wait. Just to clarify, was this like in the middle of the ceremony and you were like, oh, I need a break? No, this was like 2 p.m. Oh, okay. No, I went to the wedding later. Oh, okay. He All was right. in the wedding. I was just a guest. Oh, so you had to show up like five hours early or whatever the fuck. No, so like I had a, I, did, I got to the wedding when it started. So I just hung out. I went to lunch by myself. I, they sat me at this table next 
to this guy who was also by himself at another table. I go to order my food and he has been like kind of like snarf, snarf, snarf. Like I feel like try like trying to like make eye contact. Okay. <laughs> talk to me. <laughs> and he goes, he points to the seat across the empty seat across from me and he goes, uh, may I? Oh <laughs> boy. <laughs> and I go, uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> and he like awkwardly like goes back to his menu. He was like hunched over, like stringy hair over his eyes like just like he looked like he was out of like just like a adult swim cartoon (laughs) something like that at first i was like this guy seems like he before he talked before he spoke he was like kind of doubled over and i was thinking like oh maybe this guy's like hung over he's like trying to eat like he doesn't feel good he's been out he looks like he's been out or something like that but anyway he says may i and um then he is like quiet for a little bit and then he's like can i introduce myself and i was like i'm just trying to read my book and he goes i'm ben and i was like hi ben i'm leslie oh you gave your real name (laughs) well i didn't tell my last name also like by the way in my mind i was like if this guy does anything weird like my fork is right here on my table i'm stabbing him like, I like it. <laughs> I mean, that's how I, I am just, in most places. Like, yeah, well, so. I just had that like in my head, you know, like in case things really went south, like I did have a plan to stab him <laughs> in the side. Okay. Like I really honestly, like I played it out in my head. Anyway, this is what it's like to be a woman in the world. Yeah. So can I introduce myself? And he, I was like, okay, I'm going to read my book. And then he's quiet again. And then he... <laughs> He, I can't believe this was real. He goes, what do you think if I cut my hair short? (laughs) And I was like, sure, it would look great. Anyway, he wouldn't leave me alone. Then I asked the waitress to move me. Um, But yeah, I think he was an incel. Oh my God. Yeah, that guy definitely does sound like an incel. He went home and posted about me on 8chan. (laughs) Yeah, he was giving himself like a motivational talk for three hours before you got there, whoever sat in that booth mm-hmm. was getting hit on to that level. Yeah. He thought he was going to invite himself to sit and have lunch with me and sparks were going to fly. Yes. Yeah, this is not. So, a mm. Yeah, what do you call? So, so the point of me saying all that, what's he? He's like a bizarro dude. I think we can come up with a new term if we do. Like He's a weirdo. No, there's, yeah, there's, there's weirdos. And then like, this is a very specific type of bizarro dude. Where, like, he's definitely Intel adjacent because I can promise you he read some, like, pickup artist guide or some shit. Yes. And it was like, just go out and talk to as many women as you can and, you know, you know, pick their interests <laughs> or whatever. Like, yeah, and it's like, yeah, what do you think no, I would look like if my hair was shorter? It's like, oh, well, your hair would be, your hair would be shorter so you like a dude with shorter hair than you do now. Get the fuck out of here. Like, yeah. I think- this is going to be a really good time for me to make the confession that like when I turned 18, the most important book that I ever read was The Game by Neil no. Str- oh. oh my God. And it changed my life. No. It changed my life. No. It helped me talk to women. In a it good got way? me dates. Okay. I lost my virginity. Oh. And it made me want to become a writer. That's probably one of the most important books in my life. Damn. Wow. Yeah. No offense, but this does explain some shit. <laughs> yeah, it's all right. <laughs> I mean, like, I yeah. haven't read that book, but, like, I've read about it. And I guess, like, his argument for men learning, quote unquote, the game is that, like, you can, through learning just to talk to women, like, you can become more confident and figure yeah. out what you want to do with your life. Yeah. Just like learning how to talk to anybody really, but the scariest to is to talk to women. And sometimes you need someone to kind of help you along with that. Obviously this guy at the diner couldn't fucking do it to save his life. <laughs> he, he, like, was in the middle, he was in the middle of chapter one. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's the problem. He didn't finish it. Oh my God. Yeah. Oh my but God. The, problem, also- the thing is, That book is like, it's also a story about how Neil Strauss thinks it is a dangerous community. So there is like a story to it. What these guys are reading is not the game. It's like an 8chan post, like Leslie said. Yeah. 
Neil Strauss. Okay, he. I did not expect him to look like that. I like his look. I've never seen him before. Well, look. Does he have long hair or short hair? Nope. No, he's a powerful bald man like our friend. Ah, that's right. Oh no, but okay. So this first image of him with this like open ass shirt and vest, like this is actually exactly what I thought he was going to look. Like. Yeah. Okay. These outfits. These outfits are exactly what I thought he was going to look at. Man, look. At, so oh, this I'm, is all in the book as to why he dresses like this. But you have to look at the before and after before? picture of him. Oh wow. This looks like he underwent this transformation while writing the book. He went from looking like a guy I would expect to work in media. To like, guy I would expect to work at a different media company, honestly. Like, yeah, <laughs> to a guy I would expect is like the deputy editor of Maxim. Oh, this is a yeah. tiny man. Hold on, he's a manlet. Now, he should have just embraced his short king shit and like gone with like. There's so, so many vests. It's so many vests. <laughs> it's called peacocking tray. It's covered extensively in the book. <laughs> yeah, I know, and like that's the thing. Like, man, okay, let me. I don't know how to put all my thoughts about this before, okay. but like, I think it's like essentially just a thing where a lot of people believe in that whole like nice guys finish last thing. And it's like, no, you're confusing being a like decent person with being a pushover. And it's people who don't understand boundaries and saying like, nah, I'm not cool with that. Like, I'm not doing this. Like, and you've been treating me this way, like fuck off. And instead of just being like, fuck this person, they still harbor some desire to fuck this person. Cause it's probably like a pretty person or whatever. And so they let a bunch of bullshit slide and it's being like, Especially when you live in a place like we live in, well, I live in New York. Leslie lives in New York. And like, you see the hottest person you've ever seen in your life, like every two blocks. Buddy, I live in Toronto. Yeah. Well, I was about to say, like yeah. Toronto. Yeah. Toronto? But, um, yeah, it's like a lot of people are out there in fucking like wherever the hell Ohio. And it's like, there's three hot people there. One's yeah. married. And you struck out with the other one. So like this one's got to work. You know? <laughs> so this is not a Neil Strauss tri tip. This is a Slava P tri uh, tip. Um, but if you find yourself in that situation, go to the uh, closest airport bar to meet people. Or you could just mm. go to the closest airport and fucking move. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, also, like, in case, based on what you were saying, all you ugly dudes out here, man, New York is a place for you, okay? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. You'll, you'll see goddamn Cleopatra out here walking around with, what's his name from Hunchback Notre Dame? Quasimodo. It's, it's, a, it's a completely normal site. Completely normal site, yeah. I think dating in general just, dating sucks, like... Yeah, I want I want my government assigned wife, and I want her. <laughs> yeah, Your government, one wife, please. Yeah, I don't know. I'm a big fan of being married. Really makes life easy. It looks sick. Yeah, especially when you like the person. It looks like pretty fucking. Sick. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah, I'm a big fan of effectively being married. <laughs> You guys are basically married. Yeah. yeah. Hey, you guys are like you guys are basically commonwealth at this point. Like, yeah, yeah. I mean, like I, we have I mean we have entered into multiple legal contracts together. Uh yeah. So like <laughs> Yep. And so yeah, no, I actually we You have pets together. Yeah. We looked up the common law uh laws in both our previous state of residence and our current one to see if we had already been married and no common law marriage laws are like they're out what do you mean they're out like they don't count really wait they're out like they not valid i think in the past if you've been common law married that marriage is still honored but like you can't have a new common law marriage anymore new york does not recognize common law marriage for relationships established within its borders you got because everybody's a roommate now forever. So <laughs> if they, <laughs> yeah, you might be ethically non-monogamous and <laughs> <laughs> accidentally. That would be bringing it back. That would be so funny if, like, common law marriages in New York were just like because of roommates. You know how married several times over we'd all be exactly. Yeah. Yeah. 
Oh, and then the common law divorce. All you gotta do is say it. I don't know if y'all saw the news. I just saw it, but like, shout out to everybody over, not everybody over at Motherboard, but a good contingent of Motherboard starting their own company. 404 yeah. Media. Yeah, 404 Media, man. Y'all go subscribe to that. Oh. All three people who listen to this podcast. Yeah. Apparently hundreds of people in Sweden. We honestly should have gotten this exact same write-up for, from the New York Times. After Vice's downfall, top journalists start their own music-adjacent podcast. <laughs> <laughs> this is bullshit they're not gonna run the same story twice we lost our fucking edge i don't ever don't i don't ever want to be like mentioned in new york times man wait hold on a second my mom's calling <laughs> hey mom can i call you back um i'm recording my podcast right now uh i'm not sure but i saw your text and can you imagine giving will... birth to a child and them saying those words to you one day <laughs> <laughs> Yo, okay. Leah, Les- Leslie's in the game. She, yeah, she might. Yeah. All right. Love you, Mom. Bye. One day my son might be a podcast bro. Podcast dude. <laughs> That's how he's going to work through the trauma of what you said earlier on this episode. Well, I that correctly. <laughs> um, I, I forgot to take my other earbud out, and I heard you making <laughs> fun of me, Trey, as I'm talking to my mom, and I'm like, try- I was like trying not to like laugh. I'm not sorry. It's okay. Do um, you guys want to talk about this ginger freak? Okay, yeah. So oh, yeah, this, is, this is a good thing to end the episode on. Yeah. yeah. So during during the break, I actually watched the clip of Oliver Anthony getting interviewed by Fox News and basically being like, "Yeah, I I don't like." Like he basically was just like, yeah, I, sorry guys, I'm not racist or something. Yeah. Um, I don't know why that was the assumption about him. I mean, I think we all know why that was the assumption about yeah. him. Yeah. I, I mean, like, yeah, we, we, we do like, but also as someone who's come to love country music over the past few years, you could tell who is and isn't racist when they're singing. Like, what's mm. his name? He got canceled from fucking uh, Saturday Night Live that time. Like, Morgan Wallen. Wallen. That, that was clear early on. What, that he is or he isn't? He is. And Morgan Wallen, like, yeah, it, it was pretty clear that, like, he had some shit that he didn't want coming out and it came out. <laughs> I'm not saying guess the guy doesn't, but, like, he's clearly learned his lessons if he does have a video from when he was in, like, high school or whatever doing some wild shit. I feel like anyone who moves to Nashville in 2023 i'm like you're moving there for like the florida georgia line bar and like that whole vibe you're moving there for neighborhood reasons and we won't say what those reasons are but Mm -hmm. okay wait a minute trey i need to know which other country singers are or are not racist we don't we don't make enough like honestly any money from this podcast for (laughs) for defamation so but is is Sam Hunt okay? Oh, Sam Sam Hunt's cool as shit, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sam Sam Hunt's good money, man. <laughs> yeah. Yo, do you remember when he got on the uh, My Truck remix and he was sliding on that shit? Oh my god, <laughs> yes. Ooh. Yeah, he said something about like pulling up like to you on at the red light with a shotgun and like bumping bone thugs at you, and it was like, oh, yeah, was like what the fuck? Okay, I was like, who told you you're allowed to act like this? But yeah. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Hunt, so, yeah, actually, that might be the intro song for this episode. Just I've never episode. heard this song. I'm so excited to listen to it. After oh, this. man. Oh, dude, it whips, ass. it whips ass. It goes. It fucking goes. Um, like, if I think, like, if you pulled up on Sam Hunt and you were like, what do you think is the most singular important thing about Gucci Mane as an artist? He could probably do a TED Talk on it. <laughs> yes. Wow. Yes, he. Yeah, he's a student of the game. <laughs> he's is like what Ed Sheeran is to grime. To grime. Ed who? Yeah. Ed Sheeran. Ed Sheeran. Yeah. Ed Sheeran. Yeah. Yeah. Ed Sheeran. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Ed Sheeran. 
Is that what you wanted me to say? <laughs> I got it the first, the second time. I got it okay. the second time. This is not a podcast about Ed shortening. Uh, this is a <laughs> podcast about Oliver Anthony Music, which is his official iTunes artist name. Uh, also, you have to Google that or you're going to get someone else. That's how I know he's not a plant. Is If he was a plant, he wouldn't come out with that restaurant-ass name, Oliver Anthony. <laughs> I mean, like, what do y'all each think of the song? Um, I want to... First of all, let's acknowledge there's a good chance that this is AI. <laughs> can you uh, play the song? Like, can you, like, play a clip of it? I wish politicians would look out for miners And not just miners on an island somewhere Lord, we got folks in the street Ain't got nothing to eat And the whole beast milk and welfare God, if you're five foot three and you're 300 pounds, taxes ought not to pay for your bags of fudge drowns. Young men are putting themselves six feet in the ground because all this damn country does is keep on kicking them. There you go. You get the, oh, you get the real gist. Quick, do you want to you want to talk about a fucking dude? Like, Leslie, do you know what this guy looks like? Yeah, yeah. He's definitely a dude. Definitely yeah. a dude. <laughs> I like this photo of him a lot, and I just want to talk about this for a minute. I've dropped it in chat. This is just like a this is just like a <laughs> cool guy. Yeah, I mean, like, what's funny is he talks about having worked in a factory in Western North Carolina, and like, as someone from Western North Carolina, a dude who looks like that is not working at the fucking furniture factory in Hickory. He is working at like a craft beer factory in Asheville. <laughs> oh, okay. That's cool. That's like a type of labor. I guess like what why did people think that he was like right wing? Because people on the right wing were like, wow, this is what real music sounds like finally. No, nah, it, it was yeah, it was just because he makes country music. It was the same thing that happened with Sturgill Simpson years ago, and he was like, ha ha. He it is a bit more there is a bit more of a case. Like he has the line that says, like, uh, the obese are milking welfare. Uh, if you weigh 300 pounds, you ought not to be getting money for fudge <laughs> rounds or something. <laughs> and, like, he also oh, makes uh, it. Okay, maybe I was vibing too hard because I did not remember that line. Yeah. And he also makes an Epstein reference, which is like. What? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he says, I wish they would look out for miners like people in mines, just like they look out for miners on an island somewhere. He's really covering everything. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, man, I, okay, that line. He's, so he's a little too cute. This is like country D12, Jason. where it's just like, let's just. <laughs> also, the 17th letter of every first verse is Q. <laughs> yeah honestly you know i take some of that shit back maybe we haven't asked him enough questions yeah because like so what did fox news ask him they ambushed him they're like uh you like racism yeah yeah and he was like actually no yeah it's weird that that's the thing that came up because okay hang on a second so the 300 pound uh thing what do you think he just like because he's not skinny he might not be off the pounds no offense to any of that shit but like yeah he's a big he's a sturdy boy i mean i'm in a i'm in a discord with some people and a friend of mine was arguing that that line was not necessarily a conservative talking point and instead was like well michelle obama's one of her things was like having snap benefits have healthier choices and so, like, he was almost making, like, the wonk argument. <laughs> yeah, Michelle Obama would maybe said that shit, but I'm also not going to say that wasn't a conservative talking point based on what we know about them at this point in time. I mean, I'm I'm just, like, conveying an argument that was made to someone else in a Discord that I'm in. I am not advocating this argument. Okay. But all we know is not wrong, man. Like we might we might have to go ahead and 4D chess this song like at a different point, but Yeah, I mean it like I think that everyone was like, okay, this is an industry plant, uh, because like all of the conservative influencers were like seeming they were like sharing it en masse. 
and there was like a weird thing where it like did really really well in itunes downloads like the 99 cent like download the mp3 thing mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but They're like you also kind of own the song thing now yeah yeah i yeah. mean yeah like the antiquated technology of the itunes store but then like i don't know um friend of the pod rob arcand like went to his concert at a golf course that and it was like thousands of people there for fucking oliver anthony so it is like it he does have real fans yeah because there's nothing dudes like more than stories. stories just like a guy who's like oh man working men they got it hard people love that shit <laughs> forever but is it in the in the like uh spirit of galaxy brain 4d chess is it classist to be like the song is bad no it depends on what you're saying is bad for mm. you can just say the song sucks no it, like it completely depends like if it's just not your shit it's not your shit mm. but if you're like i don't want to hear so much about poor people and it's mm -hmm. like yeah that's why i don't yeah. listen to the basketball people's music either <laughs> and it's, yeah and it's like that kind of shit then it's like yeah i mean i definitely saw people on twitter who were shit talking the song on classist lines where it was like they were just like this is a song that like uh republican idiots like and there's like a lot of like assumptions being baked into those statements or whatever but that also mm. doesn't mean that like oliver anthony might like really want to save the children in the q and on sense <laughs> Like, I think, like, when you say it like that, yeah, because there's always, like, some weird classism built into, like, mainstream American politics where, you know, on one side, Democrats, like, the coastal elites thing or whatever, where it's like, oh, all these rich people want to make rules for the rest of the country. And then on the other side, it's like, look at those poor fucking hillbillies thinking that they know everything and they're dumb. And it's like, yeah, man, it's... So there is some classism in it in that regard. <clears throat> but, like, I think this is, like, mainly... Because when people do the classism thing in terms of politics, I think it's more, like, politically motivated because most people just treat politics like a sport. And it's like, mm -hmm. I'm like, you're wrong. And if they actually, like, analyze their feelings about it, then, yeah, they would realize that they're being classist as fuck in, like, one direction or the other. But, like, I don't care about you being classist against rich people. But yeah, I don't think it's derived mainly from like these stupid poor people. I think it's like these stupid Republicans, but people don't analyze what they mean when they say stupid Republicans. Do you think that trying to find a musician with like perfect politics, which is impossible, right? Well, his name's Killer Mike. And um, yeah. <laughs> uh, but like, do you think that's going to lead to AI music becoming more popular because then like nobody made it. So their politics are perfect because they're not real. No, because AI music is still going to suck. And AI is inherently political. Another fair point. Damn. Yeah. Yeah. Damn. Man, we can't have shit out here, man. No, nope. I just want to go out and be smooth brain one night and like not have to think about like <laughs> mm -hmm. why why the beer at the bar costs two dollars extra than it did the week before, you know. How much does a, a beer cost now? Eight dollars. Uh, so I will say PBRs used to be like three, and now they're like five. Damn. Buddy, you got to get down to Philly. They're still three bucks. Hey, That's man. insane. Beer is ten dollars here. <laughs> What? Wow. Yeah, well, that's like, ten dollars Canadian. No, but everything's just so expensive. It's crazy. Yeah, man. Mm -hmm. my, my cigarette price has gone up. The people who gave me discounts don't give me discounts anymore. Pack of accompanying filters because I roll my own. Those went up a dollar. A few weeks ago, I went and bought a, a twelve pack for a buddy's party. Shit was like four dollars more. They just don't even have certain beers anymore, man. Like, try to find a fucking pack of Tecate. Real quick, what do you remember a McDonald's hash brown costing? Less than ninety nine cents. If yeah, yeah. I just, buddy, I, it was like eighty. It's like a dollar. Uh, no, two seventy nine now. It's like two seventy nine. Get now. out of here! What? I swear to, I swear to God. 
Yeah, large fries is five bucks. Like it's it's there's no need. Yeah, fillet of fish is like fucking six bucks, six something it's, now. Like it, yeah, it's fucking crazy out here, man. Fillet of fish is that your go to McDonald's order? Uh, I get the deluxe, but yeah, it is like my go to. Yeah, fillet, fillet of fish, no cheese. It's good. It's medium tartar sauce and extra lettuce, and like yeah, it's like it's got mm. enough moisture to go through. Yeah. I gotta be honest, I've never been. I don't really do fast food seafood. Oh, it's terrific. And mm. here's the thing. I love that one, but like McDonald's objectively makes like a middle of the road fucking filet of fish. If I go to Checkers, it depends on if I walk into the Checkers and my feet are sticking to the floor if I get one there. <laughs> mm. yeah, if the your answer, feet are sticking to the floor. No, that's good. That means I'm about to make like okay. the best one. Yeah. And I already have enough alcohol in me to kill the germs. If I'm <laughs> okay. Maui's. Yeah. So that's fine. Do you like Long John Silvers? Yes. Okay, good. That was a really, like, that was a really enthusiastic answer. I'll always appreciate Long John Silvers because in college, there was one right down the road and they had student nights on Wednesdays and the deals were insane. You can get like half a pound of fried clams with a side and some rolls for like five bucks. What? Long John Silvers, if you're listening... Nersey is available to be sponsored. Thank you, thank you. Honestly, honestly, just send me food. I'll I'll I'll, I'll tell the other ones. Just like yeah. No, you're pre-negotiating. No, Leslie's right. ABC always be closing. Listen, Long John Silver's (laughs) McDonald's sponsor them. Yeah. Did you go to a Long John Silver's with the Hush Puppies? Yeah, Spartanburg, South Carolina. There you go. Long John Silver's, like, I also fuck heavy with the Golden Corral. I can't. That's a bridge too far for me. I just, like, I don't know. It's subpar. The buffet is subpar. Oh, this is, like, a fast food place. Yeah, yeah. I thought it's, like, a sit-down place. They have a combination. The closest one to me is, like... You can sit down in there, but, like, (laughs) no. You can't can't exclusively sit down. Oh, yeah. Have buffets come back after COVID? Honestly, man, just just bring buffets back. Like, who gives a fuck, man? We've been walking around without masks. Like, the who said the shit is over. Just bring a buffet back. Did you guys back. have a place called Super Salad? Yep. Yes. Yep. Yep. Spartanburg, South Carolina strip mall special. All right, I'm really glad that, like, super as in, like, S-O-U-P. Oh, yeah, we know how it's yep. spelled. We know how it's spelled. <laughs> oh, I just got that. That place, bring back super salad. I will say, I don't agree with like soups in a fucking buffet. No, it's absolutely unsafe. It's insane. Yes. Yes. Like a gravy or a condiment that's out, like that's one thing. Like if you got to do like the buffalo chicken dip on top of like whatever doesn't need buffalo chicken dip on it, that's one thing. Even like lettuce sitting out for too long is a little. Yep. And yeah. They got it under a heat lamp for some reason. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> let's get the th- <laughs> let's get the two gnarliest things that you could put under a heat lamp. <laughs> and make hard boiled eggs. Is up there. Hard boiled eggs. Is eggs up there. And like tuna oh. salad. <laughs> oh no! I, I think you. I think like the health department might shut you down if they came in there and you had tuna salad under a heat lamp. <laughs> the bar for. <laughs> A super salad, like whatever they rate an A, like for hygiene, a super salad's got to like double it because. Oh, super salad is owned by the mafia because ain't no fucking way, like, <laughs> ain't no fucking way they're passing those health checks, man. Oh, and now that I'm thinking about it, I haven't seen tuna salad under a super salad, but I have seen like noodle salad, which that's way too much mayonnaise and that shit to be under a heat yes. lamp. Okay, what about Hale and Hardy? I fuck with Hale and Hardy. They're not a buffet, but I do fuck with Hale and Hardy. I love H and H. Wait, what is yeah. what is an H and H? An H and H is like an exclusively it's soup just, chain. It's a soup restaurant. <laughs> yeah. okay. It's just soup. Yeah, it's super salad, but they make, give you the soup. Like you can't just Old walk back there and make your own or the salad. Yeah. I think it's super, it's super salad with service, and also you can't sit in there because they never have seats. If you ever, like, worked in Midtown, you would eat at Hale and Tar- Hardy. 
Oh, hmm. sometimes I would walk the extra distance just to go to Hale and Hardy for lunch one day because, like, I called up and I was like, do y'all have the Italian meatball? Because mm. <laughs> it, it was one of their rotating ones. I was like, yes, I'm on my way. And they had it with, like, the orchetti in there, too, and shit. And, like, yeah. Yeah. Italian minestrone? Chicken broth and matzo ball? Yeah, we, we do do some fast food menu reviewing on here. Leslie, you have it up. Do you want to tell us what's on? All right. <clears throat> Chicken vegetable. This soup Classic. is the perfect mix of our chicken soup and vegetable soups. Chicken broth. Did you want me to? We don't. We don't need the deck. But okay, yes. okay, okay. okay. <laughs> chicken and vegetable. Chicken broth and matzo ball. Yeah. Okay. Italian minestrone. Yeah. Tomato basil and rice. Turkey chili. Mm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that got a hmm. Mm-hmm. Mediterranean and black lentil. Ooh. Oh. Ooh. Okay. <clears throat> this is like For me. I think that they could step outside of the box a little bit and get like a Thai flavored soup in there. Okay. Would you have like a Tom Yum? I hate Hardy now. Ooh, a Tom Yum would be great. <laughs> if you're listening to this, I'm willing to be a soup consultant. <laughs> uh, real quick, I like how their chicken vegetable isn't just like chicken and vegetables cooking in the same broth. They're like, yeah, man, we just put them bitches together. <laughs> <laughs> It's like a blend. <laughs> it's like when you go to McDonald's and like you do the lemonade and you're like, oh, some Sprite. Like, yeah, that's <laughs> or like 7 Eleven Slurpees. Oh, a soup Slurpee would kind of go insane. <laughs> like if you this... can get like uh, if you get like a ceviche Slurpee from 7 <laughs> Eleven. Oh my God. <laughs> no, that would be like that would be like instant food poisoning. A ceviche <laughs> Slurpee. Not if you do it right. <laughs> that just sounds like Wait, if you ever drink a bloody mary don't fucking say anything to me right now but yeah <laughs> no this this ties back to to an early no- nursey theme where trey proclaimed that soup season is here but joe biden's economy is making it very hard to participate <laughs> i mean we just talked about like three dollar mcdonald's hash browns like what do you think soup costs have grown up to man <laughs> what is a what is a cup of Hale and Hardy run one these days? That, that's a great fucking question. Like you still on the menu? The soup is mostly water, so you could just like make that shit. Do you know what the ingredients for soup? What those are going up to? <laughs> yeah, but you don't have to use the best ones. You just like you can you can find a lot of the ones that you need on the around back from the grocery store. Not like in no, the store what you're itself, thinking about right now is this... broth. You're thinking about broth. Broth and soup are two different things. You need broth for soup, but broth is not soup. Okay, yeah, you're right. I was thinking of broth. Yeah, no, we're talking about just shavings and stuff. I got a bag full of like the bones of at least of dozen and a half Popeye's visits in the freezer that I'm waiting to make a chicken broth with. Wait, you make chicken what? broth out of old Popeye's bones? Yes. Wow. That's an innovative strategy. And yeah. like a little, I can't tell. It's like definitely genius, definitely demented, and definitely some like dirtbag behavior. Three words that perfectly describe me, man. Yeah, dude's right. <laughs> Dudes rock, bro. Yes. I think it's. We all agree I'm a visionary. Yes. I think the ratio does equal out. If you multiply them together, you get dudes rock. I sometimes buy the ghost pepper wings when I'm like, okay, so I can get like six for five dollars, which is the best wing deal in the greater tri state area. And yeah, the ghost pepper wings also set that shit off too. The bones for that. Yeah. But you don't do you you said you don't eat the you don't like them? No, no, I, I eat them because I don't waste food. Okay. And it okay. fucks me up for like the next 18 hours, but if you have nowhere you need to be, you eat the ghost pepper wings. <laughs> yeah. If I know that I want this broth to hit, then I'm gonna <laughs> need like at least the bones of like two orders of ghost pepper wings in there along with everything else. Wait, so have you done this before? Yeah, I also have like other. <laughs> like more than one. I wouldn't. I wouldn't speak so confidently about this if I hadn't done it before. Okay. More than one. Yeah, I mean, I have to perfect the recipe. More than like three times. Well, I want to say five, six. Okay. <laughs> okay. So it's like 
Okay, so, so it's not. Again. No, I got this shit down, man. Yeah. <laughs> Tough. I also, I also, <laughs> also, okay. So these are the perfect chicken bones to use <laughs> when you're making a broth. Number one, the hardest mm-hmm. one is like you just need to make some crazy recipe at home. You know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, make a crazy recipe at home, like some chicken you would never think to like make some like sticky chicken or whatever, like hit the AI and be like, what's the type of chicken I've never had before? And let them tell you like, <laughs> one, yeah, or like, yeah, like if you want to make some jerk chicken at home, whatever, like you need a wild card in there. And this is what your wild card is going to be. Okay. Number two, fried chicken bones in there. And because also don't try to scrape them off completely, like when you're making the broth, if it's still got some of the batter on it, let it go in there. Okay. okay. Ew. A second, well, you're straining everything, so it doesn't fucking matter. And a little starchiness does give some good body to the broth. Hmm. The second off is like not nearly as many, but a different type of fried chicken bone in there. Like I was talking about the ghost pepper wings. It's like you want some diversity. Or it could just be Popeyes versus like crown fried chicken. They're doing different shit over there. <laughs> And then I'm not done. I'm not done. Don't derail. Don't derail my yeah. And then the the fourth one is a couple whole rotisserie chickens from the grocery store. <laughs> okay. Yeah, because then that's a different like flavor profile and dimension, and also they cost like eight dollars. Okay. So the bones, just the bones. Oh no! You eat I, again. I don't waste money. But yeah, you. you oh yeah, yeah. okay. So yeah. Yeah, you don't do this all like in a day. This is like a process where you build up your bone collection. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to be clear on that. I'm not out here. It's just like yo, how the fuck is he? Yeah. Okay, just, okay. You're not taking like food scissors and cutting off the chicken. This is uh. No, I'm not just making the world's biggest. You're chicken not making salad. the world's largest chicken sandwich. Yeah, no, I'm, we're not doing that. Like this is not a Mr. Video. Beast video. Or whatever. <laughs> oh, yeah. Also, before you're cooking your chicken at home, a lot of people don't do this. Blanch it real quick, man. Throw it in some uh, hot water for like seven minutes. Leave it out to dry. And when you like grill it or cook it in the oven or whatever, the moisture is retained a lot better. And also mm-hmm. the steak gets like really good and crispy. Yeah. Okay. Damn. Cooking mm-hmm. a tray. Anyway. Do you know how there's like five bean soup? You're doing like a five chicken broth. Yeah. <laughs> I'll take that. I am I am in shock right now, Trey, from the goodness of this idea and like the level of thought and care you have put into making a homemade meal component out of fast food refuse. Yo, you got to be part of the Buffalo, man. Yeah. Fucking A. And in conclusion, dudes rock. <laughs> this has been Nerzy. Leslie Horton-Peterson, thank you for coming on. Um, Thanks for having me. Pleasure was mine. Thank you for tuning in. As always, if you have listened this far and you have not subscribed to us on Substack, go fuck yourself. <laughs> Very rarely are Slava and I am 100% agreement, but I think we're 110 <laughs> right now. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to do like the nice thing and be like, you should. No, but yeah. No, what's wrong with you? You're sick. <laughs> I was going to. Drew, Drew, cut it out. Don't be nice to these people. <laughs> yeah, they're fucking pigs. They don't deserve us. Yeah, fucking moochers. Don't touch my toolbox full of dirty dust shot in. Muddy old clod hoppers and a moss bird pump. Pull up on you at the red light, homie. Throw some bone thugs on to make you lose chains, jump. Woo! Tell him, boys, come and get me. I'll be riding through the city. Woo! Young, rich, and I'm pretty. Yeah. Homie, don't get it twisted. Keep it safe in the head. Take my money, you can smoke my blood. Scuff these Jordans, you can say you hate me. You can call me crazy, but don't touch my truck.